I was asked to do a video on animating of the double pendulum and I thought this is a pretty good project because it brings together a few different pieces including how to go about solving the equations of motion that we derived in a previous video. The link to that previous video appears above and in that video we came up with the following two governing equations for the double pendulum problem and this is just copied exactly from that video. You can go back and refresh and we're going to number these equations one and two and we had two angles one for each of the pendulum bobs in theta one and theta two respectively and these are the governing differential equations that we need to solve in order to find out the position theta as a function of time these are nonlinear equations so in the past we've been able to write it as mx double dot plus kx equals f we can't really do it in this case, but we can half do that. So what we're going to do is recognize that we can rewrite this as if I separate it into everything associated with the theta double dots on the left hand side and everything else on the right. So these terms have theta one and theta two double dots and as do these, their coefficients um, will appear on the left in this matrix. And then we can rewrite those equations like that, where in the case of this vector on the right, I've just simply taken these terms from the left-hand side over to the other side, and I flipped the signs on them. So there should be no confusion there. We'll call that number three. Thus, we've been able to write this now in the form m theta double dot equals f. That's the format of the equations. And just to write it in component form, to be very clear what we're talking about, the, the uh, M matrix has four components. And by comparing these two matrices, you can see what each of those are. And similarly, the right-hand side, I call this just F1 and F2, some sort of a force. But fundamentally, we've been able to write the equation in this form. Then we'll call that number four. Now, in order to solve for the accelerations, all we need to do is invert the mass matrix, and we can write it in that form. We'll call that equation five. And now, if we can just take that format and convert it to state space form, it will be suitable for numerical integration, as we've shown in other videos. As a reminder, in order to convert to state space form, we pick a new variable, let's say y, where we stack the the velocity and acceler excuse me the velocity and position vectors one above the other so y is just a 2n by 1 vector that stacks the velocities and the position or the angle in this case call that number 6 and then we can rewrite the the uh, equations of motion as y dot which is the derivative of this vector theta dot and theta and that is equal to this is just equation five and I can call that G so no big mystery here all I've done is I've taken this and I've substituted it into this equation here and I've ended up with the, this equation on the bottom and I, I'm, I'm just calling everything on the right hand side G so G is this here and uh, there's a link that appears above here to the Runga Kata video where I went through all of this in much more detail so hopefully you've watched that and none of this should be a mystery to you and then fundamentally I can discretize this by saying that's the difference in y divided by delta t and rewriting it in this format makes it suitable now for use on a numerical integrator put a box around that Okay, so the only thing that's already a little bit different at this point is I wasn't, I didn't have a stiffness matrix as such due to the nonlinearities in this problem, which came about as, as a result of this gravitational res restoring force being nonlinear. But now we can start working our magic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the code of that Runge Kutta integrator and I'm going to rework that code to be able to solve this problem. That would be the next step where we can borrow some code that we've done previously and we can use that to solve this problem. 
Okay, so to solve this problem of the double pendulum, I'm just going to reuse the code that we used for the single pendulum uh, in this video, implementing the Runga Kutta fourth order integrator using Python. And if you just go to the comments here uh, in the GitHub repository, then this is the code. And let's just get the raw version of that. Okay. So this is the code that I had. And on the previous slide, I talked about a, a function G. Here is this function, and this needs to be rewritten for our purposes here. So uh, let's see how I want to do this. I want to get rid of F because F is just zero in our case. It doesn't exist. And this is going to need to be rewritten. The step is exactly the same. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Let's get rid of this. And the first thing that I need is I need some masses, mass one, mass two, and let's just say those equal, well, I don't know, 2.0 and 1.0. This is an SI unit, so those would be kilograms. And L1 and L2, those are the two different rods. And let's just call that one and two for now. Those are an SI unit, so those would be meters. And the angles A1... Well, let's not worry about that just yet. Gravity will be 9.81 meters per second squared. Uh, F naught goes away. We don't need that anymore. We don't need an omega because there's no forcing function. Let's see. This looks the same. This is the same. The initial state, will, well, this will be different because it's a now a 4 by 1 vector in state space form it was it was a two by two system and let's make this 1.0 shall we as an initial displacement so just to be clear these first two positions are the uh, velocities and these two positions the uh, second index three and index two which are those two positions uh, those are the those are the angle the angle of the pendulum all right, this is from something from before, y1 and now y2. We'd want the two different positions. Um, get rid of that. Get rid of this down here. And this would to be to pen y2, y1 and y2. All right, so what have I done? Let's just clean it up. Uh, here's the start of the code. The variables are just mass 1 and mass 2 and gravity and the length of the two rods. We can obviously change that. We'll take a time step. Let's call it a tenth of a second for now. Um, we don't need as much as 40 seconds. Let's just do 10 seconds for now. Um, the initial array is now a 4 by 1 vector where initially just the displacement of the second bob is 1 radian. Let's see how I want to do this. Initial state. I don't need the A and the B. And I'm going to take out this inverse here. We'll calculate that above. All right, so the only thing that needs to be changed now, other than what I've done, is this function here, G. Okay, and what this function needs to do is it needs to return... Let me throw back that other slide. G is just the so-called force vector in state space form, right? So the, the first two positions are the restoring forces from the equations of motion, and the second two positions are just the velocities. All right. Angle one dot, which is theta one dot, we'll call it, and angle two dot, which is theta two dot, that is just y zero and y one. And I'm just picking it off because it'll be easier to work with. Um, similarly, A1 and A2 is equal to Y2 and Y3. Okay, so I've passed in this Y state vector. And I've said the first two positions are the, uh, the velocities and the second two positions are the angles. Now, based on that... And I'm going to go back to the previous slide again. Let's just put this up on the screen so we can have a look at what it is that I'm, I'm putting in here in terms of the formula. This is just straight off this slide. So where you see M1, 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 2, 
M21, M22. I'm just constructing that mass matrix and the force vector. You can go back and refer to this slide as much as you need to. So continuing, I say that M11, M12 uh, is equal to M1 plus M2 times L1, and then M2 times L2 times cosine theta 1 minus theta 2 is just angle 1 minus angle 2. And then similarly for M21 and M22, those are going to be equal to L1 times cosine of angle 1 minus angle 2, theta 1 minus theta 2, and then L2. All right, and then in order to construct the mass matrix, we just form a NumPy array. Whoops. And this is just uh, M11, M12, too many ones, M21, M22. I think I need an extra square bracket around the whole lot since it's a list of lists. All right, these are the elements of my mass matrix from the previous slide. And then I'll go ahead and construct the mass matrix. And similarly, for my force vector, I'll call it F1 and F2. F1 is just equal to, you know what, I'm going to paste this code in here just to save some time since I have it. Okay, so this again is just off that previous slide. This is what F1 is equal to and F2 is equal to. And I'm going to put that into a vector, MP array. And that's just F1, F2. Just like that. Um, I then want to calculate the acceleration. The acceleration is equal to... Let's go inverse of M times the force vector, which is F. And I've got inverse up here from before. Yeah, I've imported the function. All right, now all I need to do is I need to return this vector in state space form. So I'm going to return, I'm going to return a NumPy array. And... That's Excel 0, Excel 1 in the first two positions, and then just the velocities in the next two positions. So A1, 1 dot, and A2 dot. And that's it. Now it should just be a question of running it. And in order to do that, I'm going to go run dpn. dpn.py. Let's see if we got it bug free. Oh. Module name matplotlib and those three. Oh, I need to install matplotlib. So pip in install matplotlib. Okay, we're back and it's installed. Because it's not defined, we need to import that. So from math, import, cosine, sine, we'll probably also need pi. Let's get that too while we're at it. Y, oh, down here, the plotting, obviously we got to change that. Y is now Y1. And in addition to Y1, on the same set of axes, let's also plot Y2 while we're at it. But I'm just realizing I've appended the wrong things here. There should be two and three. Um, Y2 and Y3 are the angles. And down here we can call it angle one. I can type properly tonight. And angle two. All right, let's run that again. So here you can see I've released angle two from a position of one and let it go and that looks a lot better. 
So I think I'm going to cut this first video at this point. I don't want it to get too lengthy and I still have a little ways to go. I hope you found something useful in this so far. Uh, if you did, please go ahead and smash those like buttons. Or better still, subscribe to the channel. You can be notified when new videos get released. Please make sure to click on the bell below. Thank you for watching this and I'll catch up with you in the next video.